In this module, we're going to move up a level to release planning and take a look at how we estimate the product backlog. Remember that the product backlog is a repository of everything the product owner would like to have created over the life of the project. Most teams tend to write their product backlog in the form of user stories, short, simple statements told from the perspective of a user, as I've shown here. Throughout this module, we're going to look at two different units that Agile teams commonly use for estimating their product backlogs, story points and ideal days. We'll discuss the merits of each, and by the end of this next set of videos, you'll have decided which unit you prefer. If you already have a preference, by the end of this module, you'll be prepared with additional arguments in favor of that preference. Think of it as a debate between the metric system and the English system. That is, should we measure distance in kilometers or miles? That's what we'll be deciding in this module. Before we really jump into things, I want to ask you to do a short exercise. I'd like you to estimate two things for me. First, tell me how long it will take to read the final Harry Potter book. You can see it here in this boxed set. Next, estimate how long it will take you to drive from where you are to some place pretty far away. Since I don't know where you are, I can't pick that place. Pick a destination yourself that's pretty far, probably not somewhere you can drive in a day and not somewhere you drive frequently. I'm here in Denver, Colorado right now. I might pick some place like Detroit. As you do this, don't cheat and look up on the internet how many pages the Harry Potter book is or how many miles or kilometers away your destination is. I'm not really interested in the real numbers. And besides, it's not like I'm going to ask you what your estimates are. But I do want you to pause this presentation and estimate these two things. The goal is to learn something about how we estimate real world work. Our goal isn't to come up with perfect estimates right now. Okay, pause this video now and restart it once you've estimated the drive and reading of the seventh Harry Potter book. Let me guess at some of the ways you might have estimated these two activities. One thing you might have done is compared the thing being estimated to some other thing. You might, for example, have looked at the last Harry Potter book and thought it was similar to the previous book, the thick green one here, but a little longer. So you tried to recall how long it took you to read the sixth book and then increased that amount by a little to come up with your estimate. This is called estimation by analogy, and it's a great way to estimate. Estimating by analogy is an important technique and one we're going to rely on here as we build up a good estimation approach. Another technique you may have used in estimating either the driving or the reading is to first think about the size of the work, estimate your pace through the work, and then divide to come up with an estimate of the duration. Let's see how this might have worked with Harry Potter. Perhaps you estimated the size of the book at 600 pages. You then estimated that you read, say, one page every minute and a half. That means 40 pages per hour. Dividing 600 pages by 40 pages per hour gives us an estimate of 15 hours. This is a great way to estimate. You may have done it for the driving example by thinking about how many miles or kilometers away your destination was, and then dividing that by an estimated speed per hour. Having seen how we estimate real-world activities, like driving or reading, in the next video, we will turn what we just learned into one of the most valuable principles of Agile Estimating. <laughs>